Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh jami'an. First of all, I want to thank uh, the organizing committee and Dr. Najwa for the uh, invitation. And thank you, Dr. Muhammad, for the uh, nice introduction. It, it's my pleasure today to be with you at the second oncology pharmacy master class and uh, present to you for the next 30 minutes or so the management of epidermal growth factor receptors or EGFR mutated nice small cell lung cancer. This is my disclosure. I don't have any actual or potential conflict of interest in relation to the content of this presentation. By the end of my presentation, we'll be able to describe pharmacology of first, second, and third generation EGFR tyrosine kinase inhibitors. Also, we're gonna review the evidence-based treatment of EGFR mutated non-small cell lung cancer, and we're gonna discuss strategies to maximize the patient's clinical benefit from, from therapy. Uh, as you know, like the global incidence of lung cancer, approximately 2 million patients in 2018. And this was caused around 1.7 million of cancer related death in that year. In Saudi Arabia, the incidence was 416 uh, in, in, among Saudi nationals in back in 2015. And it was ranked at that time the seventh among the types of cancer. Um, as we can expect, because of the treatment advances, especially the introduction of um, uh, targeted therapy and immunotherapy, we can uh, expect that the survival after diagnosis improved over years. Lung cancer causes more death or mortality than breast, prostate, colorectal, and brain cancers combined to, together. Lung cancer deaths are declining nowadays uh, in men and women, largely due to the decrease in the smoking. EGFR mutations activate the pathway, leading to increase the cell proliferation, motility, and invasion. The incidence is more in females, more than males, and never smokers, and with Asian ethnicity. However, those characteristics should never those characteristics should never uh, take uh, the place of the testing or monitor testing when we're gonna deal with those patients. Exon 19 deletion and exon 21 point mutation or L858 are, are the most commonly founded EGFR gene mutations among the patient, which represent around 80, 85%. Also there, there, there is uh, other less common mutations which represent 10% that are also sensitive to EGFR TKIs and include exon 19 insertion and other, um, other mutations as well. Sorry, because the slide is not clear, but it wasn't easy to get a slide from the old days of the NCCN guidelines. This is slide from two, two, 2008, which will, will represent how we was treating Non small cell lung cancer, metastatic non small cell lung cancer. So at that time, for patients who have poor performance status, we was offering those patients mainly post supportive care. And for patients with good performance status, we was offering uh, chemotherapy plus minus bevacizumab. However, now in 2020, the choices are much more, as uh, Dr. Saeed mentioned. Uh, we have like so many options nowadays. So first of all, we need to do the histological subtyping, and then we need to do the molecular testing and testing for BDL1 in order to see the driver mutations is if, if it's present, so we can target with certain medications. Before we was looking on the small cell lung cancer as one disease and was treating, like I said before, based on the performance status of the patients. Now or later, we, was, we realized that we have histological subtyping. So the, we can divide the non-small cell lung cancer into 
adenocarcinoma, which represent 55% of those patient populations, squamous, 34%, and large cell and other types of cells, which represent 11%. If we took the adenocarcinoma portion, now we learn that we have multiple driver mutations. Some of those mutations we have FDA approved medication target that particular mutations like EGFR sensitizing, ALK rearrangement, MET, and uh, others. However, there is still some mutations we don't know. We, we know that, for example, Keras mutation uh, is present in a quarter of the patient with adenocarcinoma, but we are not sure about how to treat those. Still, we, we don't know. Uh, we didn't get any, any drug that target those particular mutations. So the advances is, is huge. And there was now, we are more toward the personalized the treatment for, for patients by doing the um, testing for those mutations. And as explained nicely by, by Dr. Saeed. We're gonna start to review the EGFR tyrosine kinase inhibitors. As you see in the previous slide, it represents around 17% from the adenocarcinoma patients. If we look at in, in 22 or 2004, EGFR mutation sensitive to erlotinib and gifitinib discovered in lung adenocarcinoma. Then in 2009, mutation testing uh, was incorporated in the diagnostic workup for non-small cell lung cancer. Then between uh, 2009 and 2013, we have multiple clinical trials that improve first line or first, first second generation of uh, EGFR TKIs are better than chemotherapy in the first line setting. Then in 2017, osimertinib was uh, uh, found to be superior to chemotherapy for patients in the second line setting for patients who have like EGFR T790M mutations. And uh, also uh, the cometinib was, was found to be superior to gifitinib in, in the second or in the first line setting. Then in 2018, osimertinib uh, was superior to uh, the first, second generation or first generation TKI erlotinib and gifitinib based on the FLORA trial. And we will shortly will review those trials. EGFR therapy kinase inhibitors, we have, we have a three three uh, generation. First generation include gifitinib, erlotinib. Second generation include afatinib and dacometinib. And third generation included osimertinib. And there was another third generation agent, which is rosalitinib, which was withdrawn from the market in 2016. The first and second generation having the indication or the approval in the first line sitting and the third generation osimertinib uh, uh, have two approval in first line sitting and the second line therapy for patients with non-small cell lung cancer who found to have T790M mutation. In this slide, we can see the site of action for different TKIs. So for example, erlotinib is reversibly binds to the, to the receptor uh, of actions or to the site of action as well gifitinib also, we know that it's reversibly bind to those sites of action. However, afitinib uh, is an oral TKI that irreversibly binds to the air pair uh, families, uh, including the EGFR and ERPB2. The cometinib, the same, it's, it's bind to the air pair um, family, including EGFR, HER1, HER2, and HER4. And osimertinib also irreversibly binds to its site of action. One important thing to highlight in this slide that the unbound brain to unbound blood ratio is the higher in the osimertinib, as we can see this number represents how much the drug penetrates to the CSA. And this might explain, as we'll discuss later, the benefit of osimertinib in patients with uh, CNS metastasis. The, all the four um, TKIs are those once daily. Erlotinib should be taken on empty stomach. And this is important. We will discuss at the end of my presentation why it's important to have osimertinib or to have erlotinib on empty stomach. 
Erlotinib and afetinib need to be adjusted for patients with renal impairment. Erlotinib, uh, gifetinib, and afetinib need to be uh, have those, uh, those adjustments with patients with, uh, with the hepatic impairment. Also, we need to take care and to consider the major or the uh, clinical important drug-drug interaction, which might necessitate either increase or decrease the dose of the drug. With erlotinib, we need to consider also, uh, consider that uh, smoking, as you know, this is enzyme inducer, so we need to consider adjusting the or increasing the erlotinib dose if the patient continue to smoke. Key points to remember, newer anti-EGFR agents have been developed to overcome expansion of the resistant, resistant clones in EGFR mutant and small cell lung cancer. Third generation EGFR TKI have better CSF penetration because as I said before, it has more unbound to, uh, to brain to, to uh, blood ratio. So uh, they have better CSF presentation compared to the first and second generation TKIs. We're gonna start discussing the first line treatment of LGFR mutated non-small cell lung cancer. Just, this is a brief from the NCCN or latest version of the NCCN guidelines. As you can see, if we have a patient with sensitizing EGFR mutation, we need to see if, if this mutation discovered before the treatment or during the treatment. If it was discovered before starting any line of treatment, any of the first, second, third generation EGFR will be our options. However, the NCCN guidelines putting osimertinib as the preferred agent, but also the other agents as well are uh, an options. Lately, uh, uh, lately, erlotinib plus uh, ramucirumab added to the guidelines and also erlotinib plus bevacizumab. If the patient already, when we got the, the results from the mutation back, uh, found to have positive EGFR mutation, then we need to have the, we have the option either to continue our treatment, then after finishing the treatment, we start the, the EGFR uh, agent or we can stop the treatment, interrupt the treatment, and start our uh, first, second, or third generation TKI. Now we're gonna have a review of the land or some of the landmark trials, which shows the benefit or which put the um, EGFR uh, tyrosine kinase inhibitor in, in the front line. The IPASS trial, which was a phase three randomized trial, assessed the first line therapy with gifetinib alone versus carboplatin baclitaxel in Asian patient with EGFR positive metastatic non small cell lung cancer. So based on this trial, the GFTNB group has statistical significant difference in the medium BFS, which was 9.5 versus 6.3 uh, for the chemotherapy group. Uh, there was no overall survival benefit in, in this patient population or the, the GFTNB didn't show uh, any benefit in, a, in the, the overall survival versus uh, the chemotherapy. The aortic phase three randomized trial also, uh, it was comparing first generation TKI versus chemotherapy. So it shows that uh, it was, uh, again, the same setting. This was a phase three randomized trial, assessed first line therapy with erlotinib versus chemotherapy. And uh, it, it demonstrated the superiority of erlotinib versus chemotherapy in the first line setting with a median progression free survival of 9.7 versus 5.2 for, uh, for the uh, other group or for the chemotherapy group. And also, we, as we can see, there was no overall survival benefit among this group. The hazard ratio was 0.93 and it was the result was non-significant or statistically non-significant. Now, what about the second generation TKI versus chemotherapy? This was demonstrated in the LUX3 uh, trial, which was again a phase three randomized trial reported that first line therapy with afetinib improved progression free survival when compared to chemotherapy with a median BFS of 11.1 month versus 6.9 month with, uh, um, and this result was statistically significant. 
but again with with each e either lux three or lux six trial uh, by its own there was no uh, benefit for on on the overall survival however when they combined in analysis they combined both trials which maybe not right so they found like there is a significant difference however this is not taken into consideration now let's go for that for the first question is there is a benefit using TKI over chemotherapy in those patient population as we saw from the um, first uh, three trials it the TKI demonstrated improvement and prolongation of the progressive free survival versus chemotherapy group but however there was no um, overall survival benefit What about first versus second generation TKI? The Archer 1050 uh, demonstrate this or tested this and comparing the cometinib versus gefitinib. And they uh, conclude that for the primary endpoint that progression free survival was more in the, the cometinib group when compared with the gefitinib with BFS of 14.7 months versus 9.2 months for the gefitinib group. And also there was uh, overall survival benefit with 34 months versus uh, 26 months for the GFTNB group and the result was statistically significant. Keep in mind an important thing with this trial that they excluded, you know, excluded the patient with CNS metastasis. Uh, also the group for our documentary group was um, the rate of discontinuation the treatment was more and the rate of grade three for uh, toxicity was more in that the cometinib group. As you know, after a use of the first, second generation TKI patient will develop resistant and progression after around one year of, of treatment or of response. More than half of uh, those patients will develop T790M uh, mutation after a use of first, second generation TKIs. And in 20% of, of those patients, we don't know the exact mutation. However, in the uh, rest 20 or the rest of the um, uh, mutation, we have different types of mutations like HER2, HER2 plus T790M mutation, mate amplification, and others. Now, what about first versus third generation TKI? This, this answer was the, um, uh, answered by the FLORA trial, which investigated the osimertinib versus erlotinib and gefitinib. This was a randomized phase three trial. They compared osimertinib 80 milligram versus erlotinib 150 or gefitinib 250. The cross crossover was allowed after disease progression or after approval of T790M positivity. For the primary outcome, osimertinib showed superiority of the, around 19 months in, in, in the uh, progressive free survival versus 10 months in the standard of care GFR or uh, erlotinib and gefitinib, and the results was statistically significant with hazard ratio of 0.46. Also the final, the updated final analysis for, from the FLORA trial demonstrate an improvement in the overall survival for a simertinib group with uh, overall survival of uh, 38 months versus 32 months for the standard uh, EGFR TKIs. And the result was statistically significant with hazard ratio of around 0.8. Now, what about the patient or the BFS in patient with CNS metastasis at baseline? So also we can see from the FLORA trial that uh, osimertinib demonstrated an improvement in the median progression free survival of 15.2 versus 9.6 for the other group in the patient who has uh, CNS metastasis at baseline and also demonstrated a benefit for patients who don't have uh, uh, CNS metastasis at baseline. Also, it's worth to mention that CNS progression event occurred in 6% of osimertinib versus 15% uh, with the EGFR TKI, which erotinib and uh, gefitinib. 
when we compare from the floor tray, when we compare the toxicity, it was grade three toxicity. It was almost comparable between the groups. However, um, dermatitis, acne form was more in the erlotinib, gefitinib group. And also the elevation of ASTLT was more in the gefitinib, erlotinib group. If we put the frontline first, second generation TKIs together, also we can see though it's just in brief, all have included the main EGFR mutation, L858R and XL19 deletion. When they compare to chemotherapy, almost we can see the median progression free survival was almost ranging from nine, nine months to almost 13 months. And the chemotherapy also respond was almost similar. Also, we can see the result was, was statistically significant. And also, the, which is important, that overall or the objective response rate was more in, the, in those group on the TKI group when compared to therapy. Let's just summarize some of the, what we discussed in the previous slides in the first line sitting. So for example, if we have osimertinib versus gifitinib, erlotinib in the floral trail, if we looked on the BFS, we have, um, we have improvement in the BFS, improvement in the quality of life. This was bending the overall survival, but, but now we know that also there is a overall survival um, advantage and less toxicity and of course the CNS penetration. So patient who has uh, like CNS metastasis at baseline or they will get benefit. Also, when we are comparing the cometinib with gefitinib, there is improvement in the BFS, and there is uh, more toxicity with the, uh, the cometinib group. When we compare the gefitinib, erlotinib with chemotherapy, for gefitinib with chemotherapy with platinum uh, doublet, we have better uh, BFS and better quality of life, less toxicity, no overall survival benefit, and the same thing almost for the uh, erlotinib. In summary of the first line treatment, TKI is a standard of care in non-small cell lung cancer with EGFR sensitizing mutation, afetinib, gefitinib, and erlotinib. There, there is no significant difference and all but bear the guidelines that are an option, good option for patients who having EGFR mutated non-small cell lung cancer. Uh, they offered a better BFS than chemotherapy. There was no major improvement in the overall survival. Regarding the second generation uh, EGFR or dacometinib, showed improved overall survival over uh, gefitinib. Osomertinib, keep in mind, it has a better BFS and overall survival than other TKIs. For patients with CNS disease, osomertinib showed uh, BFS and overall survival benefit. Dacometinib, uh, dacometinib excluded patients with CNS disease. Let's move to the second line treatment of EGFR mutated non small cell lung cancer. Just in quickly, I don't want to go uh, for details in the, for, for the NCCN guidelines. This is the latest version of NCCN guidelines. So if patient progress on the uh, first line of semertinib, then if the patient uh, asymptomatic or have brain symptoms, we need to consider the local therapy and we can continue with uh, semertinib. If patient have like systemic symptoms, and multiple lesions, we can go with systemic therapy. If patient, if patient uh, progress on other agents, first, second generation, EGFR like erlotinib, gefitinib, or afetinib, then we need to do the T790M mutation testing. Then we'll see if the patient is asymptomatic, we can consider uh, continue the first line. What, what we was using, we can continue. If the patient is, uh, symptomatic, then the, we have like multiple lesions. We need to see, of course, at any point of those in the second line, when we have T790M mutation, we need to start the patient on osimertinib. And just want to highlight one thing in the previous slide. If the patient have multiple lesion, we need to do the uh, rebiopsy the patient because to rule out the transformation of non-small cell lung cancer to small cell lung cancer. The ORA3 trail demonstrates the efficacy of osimertinib in the second line treatment versus uh, for, for patients who have T790M mutation. 
So the median BFS was 10.1 months versus 4.4 months for the chemotherapy group with hazard ratio of uh, 0.3 and the results was statistically significant. Also, osimertinib shows improvement in the objective response rate and uh, uh, objective response or overall uh, response for those patients. What about on the second line patient who have brain metastasis? Also, there was the osimertinib demonstrated a benefit and uh, improvement in the median progression-free survival with 8.5 months versus four, four uh, months for the uh, chemotherapy group. The summary of the second line, just in brief, if we have t 790 m mutation, then we should treat with osimertinib. If the t 790 m or negative uh, patient have many options, but best standard of care is not well established, so we have many options. Now, just we gonna review a few strategies to maximize the patient's clinical benefit from treatment. As you know, adherence to medication is important. When we have patients on IV medication, so we can monitor the adherence of patients to their cycles of chemotherapy. However, what we discussed in this uh, presentation was oral chemotherapy. So uh, managing or monitoring the adherence of the patient will be challenging. This is just a brief of the, the different TKIs or GFR TKIs um, um, uh, adverse events. So as we can see, we have mainly the rash, diarrhea, dry skin, stomatitis, and other um, uh, adverse events. For efetinib, dacometinib, we can see also there is increase in the LFTs. From uh, the safety profile from the flora demonstrate uh, the, that for uh, osimertinib, the grade three, four uh, acne rash was less in the osimertinib group and also the elevation in the L LFTs was less when compared to gifitinib and erlotinib group. What about the acne rash when we compare between different uh, TKIs? For grade three, four acne rash, we can note from this slide that erlotinib, afetinib, dacometinib have more grade three, four acne rash if we compare it to osimertinib and gifitinib. Now, is the, the rash good or bad? This is, we need to consider something. Uh, kindness and colleague uh, investigate the potential value of erlotinib associated rash as a predictor for prognosis and treatment response in a real world cohort of patients with advanced non-small cell lung cancer. Uh, so this, in this uh, review or this trial, they find or their findings suggest that erlotinib associated rash may represent a clinical valuable biomarker for the prediction of treatment response and overall survival in patients with advanced nice small cell lung cancer. As we can see here, the rash was associated with more cumulative progression-free survival and more survival in those patient population. This is just briefly to, uh, to have uh, some, some guidance for how to treat those rash. Of course, each institution should have their own guidelines based on their available agent in the formulary for management of uh, those type of rashes. Mainly, generally speaking, for grade one, two, we need to have use like uh, good skin hygiene and sunscreen. We might use uh, some um, topical agents like hydrocortisone. Then for the second or for grade two, we need to consider also to some topical and we might consider like uh, doxycycline, minocycline, for a grade three or intolerable grade two, we'll start thinking of reducing the uh, uh, doses of uh, the uh, EGFR TKIs, and we might use oral agents like um, minocycline, doxycycline, and prednisolone. The compliance, as I said before, it's uh, it's matter. So, for example, erlotinib need to be given with, on an empty stomach. If the patient not compliant, this means the patient is taking the drug or erlotinib with food. This might affect the AUC, so this will increase the bioavailability of the drug, and so it will increase the toxicity. So we need to make sure that the patient understanding how they are taking their medication. Just in summary, third generation EGFR TKIs like osimertinib are more specific for mutated EGFR associated with less toxicity and bitter CNS penetration. 
uh, be proactive or like Rubada should be proactive with monitoring and managing the EGFR toxicity because we said that managing the toxicity will uh, have or will improve the outcome and the compliance of the patient. So rash may be individual or indicative of response. This is something to consider. If we have a rash, we might try to manage this, that rash if it's not uh, an advanced grade versus stopping the drug. El effective toxicity management is, is vital. And by this, I'm, I'm concluding my uh, lecture. Thank you for listening.